So Melissa and I have done a lot of free energy research. We even have some reports that hopefully we're going to get out soon. But I randomly picked up this copy of Nova Express by William S. Burroughs. He wrote Naked Lunch, a very strange book, which I've read, but it's good, too. I mean, he's an odd beat poet, but he writes about a lot of the same conspiratorial stuff that we're researching. And here he is in the opening of this book talking about, for God's sake, don't let the Coca-Cola thing out. Don't talk about the cancer deal, not the green deal, not the orgasm death, not the ovens. Maybe that's a Holocaust reference. And on the next page, he identifies that he's talking talking about the mentality of those who write things in top secret, who write classified reports, who write for the board only reports, who consider themselves members of the elite, members of the initiates. And he calls them right here, cowards and collaborators, said they, they've sold the earth out from under those who haven't even been born, and they operate a conspiracy. Right here, a page later, he's even more plain. He says, peoples of the earth, you have all been poisoned. A direct warning that, honestly, we should take literally and seriously. And then in the footnotes, another page later, he starts talking about this that I thought was very interesting. A quote from Newsweek, March 4th, 1963. Quote, every substance has a characteristic set of resonant frequencies at which it vibrates or oscillates. And he says it's a scientific fact. It reminds me directly of the research of Royal Raymond Reif, who's been suppressed. Another paragraph below it, he starts talking about the research of Wilhelm Reich, who investigated the orgone energy and documented how it's a blue life energy present in everything that's alive. His work was destroyed. It was literally burned. His books and research were burned. Yeah, he died in prison, and Rife was chased out of the country because he was using frequency waves to cure cancer. Yeah. Anyway, I obtained a copy of Newsweek, March 4th, 1963, and it's right here. It's got on the cover McGeorge Bundy, JFK's top guy, you know, about nine months before JFK was assassinated. He's the big Skull and Bones Ford Foundation guy. But at any rate... Here they are talking about not Royal Raymond Rife, but Leo Baranski, and he's doing research into very similar things. It's called a shot in the head, and he's about to do a reputable experiment as a psychologist and a physical chemist uh, where he's going to shoot himself in the head with microwaves to target ATP, adenosine triphosphate, inside his brain. That's, of course, the energy, the cellular energy of the entire body. It's used by the brain, a uh, very important chemical in, in every bodily process. And basically, he says over here, every substance has a characteristic set of resonant frequencies at which it vibrates or oscillates. And based on that principle, he has targeted the resonant frequency of ATP energy to shoot it with microwaves, to bombard it, to break it down, and hopefully to trigger the release of ATP, which is very useful, very high energy. And he says here that he knows it's dangerous. Baranski is well aware that microwaves could be dangerous. Monkeys have been killed within minutes by bombarding them with high-frequency radio waves. It depends on the angle, said the 36-year-old scientist. If you hit it from the top, it will kill. From the side, monkeys have endured three hours of irradiation without any trouble. And there he is, uh, one of the only known photographs of him, saying uh, what almost looks like a coded message. From the top, it will kill. And this, this is a guy who worked on unified field theory with Einstein, right? Yeah, and he's been involved in some very credible research that could yield free energy applications. And here's an Associated Press article from a month and a half before February 1963. Scientists will test ray gun on self. And they talk about the same technology. He says the implications could be, number one, it could double man's lifespan, maybe even make him incredibly stronger, but number two, it could also paralyze or kill entire populations. And number three, the trigger of ATP energy release could rival that of nuclear explosions that could be tamed to provide a virtually inexhaustible source of industrial power. That's pretty big stuff. Yeah, and it even says in here, let me see if I can find it, that using microwaves, they could extend the range of effectiveness to almost any distance on Earth and in space. They could make weapons out of it. They could at least double man's lifespan with regular periods of radiation of this by dosing with ATP. They could also, he also says down here that a pound, I believe, one pound of ATP could yield in one minute the energy equivalent to burning 7,000 tons of coal. That's huge. And what I think is even more interesting is that other than this article and the one in Newsweek that's basically a summary of it, 
There's not a lot of information about this Baranski guy. He has been memory hold. This is the last thing I could find on Leo Baranski having to do with the fact that in 1971, when he was 45 years old, he began to feel ill on a Saturday. And by Monday afternoon, he was hospitalized. And by Monday evening, he died. And they listed his cause of death as acute leukemia, which was only diagnosed after he entered the hospital. So he was only 45 years old. And when you think about the fact that some of his very last work had to do with electromagnetic frequency, he was working for NASA, the U.S. Air Force, and U.S. Naval Research for the Man in Space program. I mean, the guy was on to something. He worked in the aerospace industry. He designed missiles, bombers, planes, very high-level stuff. It started releasing papers on unified field energy, which they think is the key to free energy. And he had about a decade run here. And then he disappeared off the map. At the time of his death, he was in the process of writing three prospective books for publication, and he was planning on teaching a course that traced the evolution of various field theories from Newton through Lancelot White. He wrote an entire book on unified field theory, but it's extremely limited print, very expensive to get your hands on. There are papers out there that he's written, and you can only find little breadcrumbs of them here and there, hints and traces. But we know they're still using this type of technology, but it's not really released to the public. Will the people ever find out about this and other research? Uh, Clearly this parallels or plays off of research done by Tesla, done by Royal Raymond Reif and other people who are starting to figure out what really makes the universe tick. What happened to this guy? He was obviously onto some pretty big things. Where's all of his work? And why was he stopped? 